next day's video is like a compilation of a bunch of movements that might help you feel better in your body. So think of it as like a tool belt. It's not a workout, but there are moves that can help you improve how you're feeling. So it's organized by section of the body. So we're gonna start with head and neck and kind of work our way down from there. Um, they don't have to be all done. They don't have to be done consecutively. It's really just like a reference video for you to refer to when you need help feeling better in your body. So head and neck is where we're starting. So you're gonna take the palms of your hands and smush them into the sides of your head. So you're gonna put just enough pressure that you feel it, and then you're gonna try and smush your head fascia up. So think about like literally lifting your meat suit up from the sides of your head, and then you're gonna uh, close your eyes for bowing points, but inhale through your nose. And if it makes sense, I want you to inhale through the top part of your nose. So like, don't think about inhaling through your nostril, I know it's tough, tough, but inhale through the upper part. So like, that's where you're focusing on breathing. So if that doesn't make sense, just breathe. Um, smush your hands together, lift up, inhale through your nose, exhale through mouth or nose. And in general, everything you're doing here, move with your breath. If you want a number, six to 10 breaths, but kind of go by how you feel. You should feel better as you do it. And if not, maybe it's not the tool for you that day and that's okay. But breathing always helps make things better. So. Next, after you've smushed your head and lift your fascia, we're gonna talk about trap pull with head turn. So that first one is really good for like sinus pressure, headaches, um, things like that, or just if your head feels tight, you know? Um, this one is gonna be for everyone who always has a tight neck, feel like they're constantly cracking it. I just cracked. Um, so you're gonna take your hand, ideally skin to skin is better, because you're all, again, moving fascia, but um, you can hold your clothes if you prefer. You're gonna take your hand on your trap and then pull diagonally across your body and then look towards the side that you're pulling. So because my right hand is on my left trap, I'm starting with my head here and then I'm slowly turning my head to the left as I pull my hand kind of over my collarbone towards the center line of my body. So um, you don't have to do both sides on all these. I think the first few times you're doing it, you should definitely try it. Sometimes we have pain on one side or tightness on one side and it's actually because something on the other side is tight. So bodies are fun. Um, so after trap pull head turn, where you're turning towards the side you're pulling, we're gonna talk about standing tilts and turns, also known as tennis ball neck drills, but this is gonna be done without a tennis ball. Um, so you can do these lying. I'm just gonna show you standing. So you'll start out, um, I put my hands on my chest because it allows me to feel them better and be in a better position. So this might be something where you kind of like pull down just a little bit on your pecs and then Nice stacked position, so ears, shoulders, ribs, hips, knees, everything's nice and in line. And then you're going to uh, very slightly tuck your chin, and then you're going to turn your head to the left, bring it back to center, turn your head to the right, bring it back to center. And then tilting, you're going to reach your head up and over to the left, back to center, up and over to the right, and back to center. So. Uh, be careful that your chin starts to do this. It's fine, but try to keep your chin tucked and lengthen the sides of your neck as you're doing that one. Um, and then just pay attention if you're having a really hard time turning your head in one way but not the other way. That's something to notice and you can use that as a tool for other things in your workout. So uh, after you do your standing tilts and turns, sorry, I have it. You can do these in whatever order, but self-resisted neck slide. So this one is really good for all of us who are like this. So anyone who does things in front of them, any modern living human nowadays, but you know. So when your shoulders come forward and our head tilts like this, it lengthens the front of our neck and makes those muscles have a harder time activating and it shortens the back muscles. And so they're just kind of clenched all the time. So we're gonna take your thumbs. I like thumbs, you can also use index fingers, um, but right kind of where like your neck and head start meeting, you're gonna poke there. And so if you wanna look it up, suboccipital muscles, you're poking the top of them where they attach to your skull. So you're gonna poke those ones, and then with your chest as open as you can, you're gonna try and tuck your chin slightly and then slide your head back. So you feel like you're pushing against that pressure that you're putting. So like fingers right on the base of your skull, tuck your chin, slide back, super flattering and let it go. So you're not necessarily like reaching your head forward and pulling back. The main thing is you're going from neutral and then just, just sliding enough that you feel those muscles kind of activate. So you're not using the big muscles to pull back, you're using these little tiny ones. So do small movements and take your time with it, really focus on how you feel. 
Um, again, closing your eyes allows you to kind of like pay attention to what's going on inside more. Might be a good thing. Um, so that's our head and neck portion. And next, we're going to do shoulders, chest, and upper back. So, coracoid coke flossing. Uh, if you've seen any other video I've done, this is probably on there. It's a really good one for every human. So back to the posture like this. When we do this, these muscles right here shorten and our upper arm bone usually internally rotates. So that this is just like a cluster of tightness and shortened length. This is tight but lengthened. So what we're gonna do is poke our core quick process. So right where your pec liner and your biceps meet, you're gonna poke in there, reach your arm out to the side and then swoop it across. And then you're gonna turn your palm up Inhale to open, exhale to reach across. So if you've done the horizontal ones and you're like, yeah, they feel pretty good, but I want a little bit of a different thing. You can do a Y raise or half a Y. You're going to tuck your thumb in the opposite pocket. So this hand is kind of trying to swoop back behind that shoulder and then opposite thumb to the pocket. Inhale up, exhale down and across. So all part of the same coracoid family, all do good things. They just move your shoulders a little differently, right? So see which one feels good for you. Um, next we have floaty arms. So you're going to think about lifting your heart. So versus like pulling your shoulders back and doing that where my back kind of arch right there, soften your knees, lift your heart and stand up straight. And then you're going to externally rotate your arms. So think about opening your chest even broader, turn your palms up, inhale. You can look up for bonus points. Touch your fingertips together if that makes sense for you, and then turn your palms down and imagine pushing like balloons down. So you have like a little bit of energy in your hands. So it's like you have little electrodes on your fingers or you're lifting up some sort of object and then pushing it back down. So that's floaty arms for you. In the same realm and family as floaty arms is cactus arms. So what you're gonna do is think about pushing your toe tips into the ground, lift your belly button up and in so you're nice and stacked, and then you're gonna start with your palms facing you. So uh, forearms parallel to each other, palms facing you. And then you're going to think about sliding your elbow points, <laughs> elbow points up as high as you can, keeping them parallel. And then you're gonna open your chest, squeeze your shoulder blades together, and then pull down and around. So like little swirl caps. And then if you wanna be fancy, you can round your upper back. So give it kind of what it wants in the comfort position it normally has. And then inhale to teach it how to move differently. Open up, energy in your hands to let you pull down, and then back. So that is cactus arms for you. It's probably one of my favorite things ever, and it just feels really nice, especially if you're someone who like tries to make yourself small or like not take up space. This is a great one to help practice opening up, um, and it just feels really nice. So final one on shoulders, chest, and upper back is rotational inhale to reach. So energy hands again. You're gonna act like you're holding little orbs or whatever you wanna hold, but hold something and then you're going to inhale slowly turn your palms in towards each other and then out so you're internally rotating your arms as you reach and kind of round your upper back and then exhale initiate the movement at your shoulder blades so my shoulders are doing it first squeezing my shoulder blades back and then my palms turn neutral or towards each other so from here inhale forward exhale back all thinking about shoulder blades so that is the end of our shoulders, chest, and upper back section. Next, we have mid and lower back. Who knew? What comes next? Uh, so you're gonna do standing T-spine circles. You're going to either have your hands crossed over your heart, hands out here. Hands can be here. This is not my preference in my body, but you do you, right? So it doesn't really matter where your hands are, but I'm gonna go here. So think about having a pretty solid foundation. You feel your feet on the ground. You're going to inhale up super tall, Reach up and over to the right side. Bend your knees kind of round through. And then go up and over to the left side and get a little bit of spinal extension. And then back down and around. So as I'm going, I'm trying to create length in one side while keeping length in the other side, which is kind of challenging. And then you'll reverse the circle. So then I'm gonna go up and over the left side, bend my knees as I round through and then inhale uh, on the right side. So you're kind of doing like circular standing cat cow. Um, if that doesn't make sense, just ignore that cue, but you're making sure that your body is kind of like rolling around in a circle. It's really good for your nervous system, really good for your spine. If your spine's in better alignment, your shoulders and chest will be in a better alignment because it'll actually be able to glide better. So everything gets better. 
So next, we're gonna do cannonball TBA breathing. So your TBA or transverse abdominis is this really cool muscle. It's super important for breathing, right? So it kind of comes back here, wraps around, and like helps make up the bowl of your pelvic floor. If you're like me and you stood like this for a long time, it probably isn't working that great because it's been smooshed and tight and it hasn't allowed you to actually breathe into that part. So I'm gonna have you lay on your back for the cannonball section, but I want you to think about the space between your hip bones and your little ribs back here, the little floating ribs, right in there, kind of like where your QL is. I want you to think about that part expanding. So, cannonball, think about jumping into a pool like cannonball. You're going to lay on the ground and then bring one knee up at a time, kind of get comfortable, feel free to like wiggle, and then you can wrap your arms around, you can grab here. If this is not where your body's at and you're up here, that's also fine. Just kind of do what feels good in your own body, right? So the main thing I want you to think about is kind of lightly like lifting your belly button up towards your ribs. So it's not like you're tensing, you're just kind of like lifting a little bit and then hold that lift as you inhale and it's gonna force you to inhale through the back of your body. Um, bonus points, if you push your tongue to the roof of your mouth, kind of like the back of your tongue to the back of the roof of your mouth and breathe through your nose, it will help you engage your TBA. So you're just gonna take big breaths in there and then exhale out through your mouth or nose. Bonus points for exhaling through your nose. And then sometimes as you inhale, you almost feel like it kind of lifts you off the floor. Um, it took me a while to actually get to that point, but that is okay and actually kind of a good thing. So you'll do as many and feel good, as many breaths that feel good for you. Um, then freestyle cat cow. So freestyle meaning yeah, you can totally do the strict one where it's hands under shoulders, feet press in, belly button lifts up and in, and then starting from your pelvis, you'll tilt your pelvis forward, slowly reach your chin forward as you inhale, and then exhale as you round through, lift your belly button up, push your hands and feet through the ground, and this is good for whole spine. It's in like mid lower back, but it's good for the whole thing. And then you can also do like a little side cat cow. You may do bent position cat cow where you have your hands on your knees and you're rounding your back and then flexing your back. So, some sort of spinal flexion, dealer's choice, maybe in cat cow style. So that's always gonna be good for you. And then hugging supine twists. So you're gonna hug yourself, you'll be on the ground again. And, I like reaching my arm way out in space and then up and over because it feels good for me to do and help my shoulders. So maybe try that. Otherwise, just wrap your arms around, hug yourself. Hold kind of tight, like you love yourself or like you haven't seen yourself in a long time. Hug tight and then inhale to drop your knees towards one side. So if my knees go to the right, I'm trying to keep my left shoulder down. And then exhale up the center. Now my knees are gonna go to the left and my right shoulder is gonna stay down. So. I want you to think about lengthening through the muscles of your stomach versus just twisting into bones, right? So you wanna try and make sure that you have nice, easy movements. Um, you can totally switch arms too. So like I started with my left arm on top and see how it feels different. It will feel different and it might be a good diagnostic tool for you. Maybe you didn't know one side was tighter than the other. Um, and also, if one side's tired from the other and it's not causing you problems, it's okay, but you can always try to improve it, right? So, hugging supine twist is the last one on mid lower back, and then next we're gonna start doing lower body with hips and glutes. All right, peeps, now for hips and glutes. So we're starting our lower body now. You're gonna take a seat, try to sit up as tall as you can, and if you notice that you're kind of like, rounding your lower back and you can't sit up straight, totally fine, but elevate your butt on something, whether it's a pillow, yoga block, whatever you have. Um, and if not, that's fine, just bend your knees a bunch. So uh, you're gonna have one leg that's straight, and when I say straight, this is my straight leg back here, and then I'm gonna slide my one foot back. So versus kind of like leaning back and getting it up, see if you can just slide back and get that hip into socket. So this leg is straight-ish, and then this one is hugging up close to you, Think about having your feet in line with where your hip bones are, and then you're gonna hold your knee 
whether it's like you wrap your forearm around it, whether you pull up here, towel, whatever you need to, but you're trying to create compression in this hip socket. So you're trying to shove your femur into your pelvis and then pull that knee close. Think about inhaling up the front of your body, exhale down the back of your body and just breathe. So once you've done one side, you'll switch sides. Again, try to notice if you're having to swoop out to get your leg up or if you have to lean really far back. Just keep in mind that these things are telling you stuff about what's going on in your body and those things can help you address why they're happening. Some things are fine, some things should be improved. So that's up to you to decide. Um, E-tuck breathing here is gonna help improve your hips by allowing your pelvis to actually move more. So if your quads are tight, they can pull your femur into a different alignment, which means that your upper nubbin of your femur doesn't necessarily nuzzle into your hip socket as well. So this is going to allow you to compress and kind of reset that joint capsule, so your hip capsule. So you're gonna do those as long as you need to, six to 10 breaths, still good. And then after you've like warmed up your hips, I would recommend doing this one before you do the next one so you don't have to do them all consecutively but this one is helpful for the next one. So figure four or pigeon, depending on what you want to do, figure four position. You will lay on your back. Think about having one foot grounded. So my right foot's going to push into the ground as I lift my left leg up. And then I'm thinking about my left heel being the highest point. So I'm flexing my toes towards my knee. Heel is trying to be the tallest point. And then I'm going to externally rotate my femur. This is why those first ones come to play. I'm going to externally rotate my femur. So turn my femur out to the side and then cross over. So there's my figure four. If you need more than this, you can reach through. If you need a little less, you can also scooch this knee out. So instead of being up close, you can be further out and just focus on pushing that knee away from you. Or if you need more, think about playing with the angle of your foot. So I'm gonna push my left big toe bone forward right now. And whoo, I feel that all the way up higher. This is also my body, so that's what I feel. See what you feel. Um, so figure four is there, and then pigeon, you would, I like starting out in a push-up position or in like a knee plank, and then think about flexing your hamstring, so trying to get your heel close to your butt, and then pulling up and in, or from plank pose, same thing, up and in. And from there, same idea as before, you're trying to get your femur in the hip socket. So you're kind of pulling this hip back in space. That foot is pushing into the ground. And then don't worry if you can't get your leg like a seven and it's more like a little paper clip, like mine. Um, that's okay, it just means you're close to your hip capsule a little tight, which is why we're doing these. So you'll be here, think about keeping your spine nice and long so you're not dumping into everything. And then if you want, you can walk your arms forward and go down on your forearms, if that feels good. If that's like, no, F and away, that's fine too. Um, stay up and breathe. So you're trying to think about breathing so your body knows that it's okay to be in this position. Because some of these are gonna be uncomfortable. It's part of why we're doing them. It's because it's an uncomfortable thing and we need to teach your body to have more capacity and more capability for uncomfortable things. Because it's gonna happen, that's just part of life, right? So this is a tool belt, again, Use it when you need it. Um, after your figure four or pigeon pose, we're gonna talk about happy baby or half stirrup pose. So we're gonna have you start out laying on your back again. Think about, I prefer bringing one up so versus just throwing them both up. Think about mindfully lifting one knee up or one foot off the ground, other foot off the ground. And then for happy baby, if you can keep your back nice and long on the floor and reach the outsides of your feet, Cool, that's not for everyone, so you can also do it from your knees and you just kick up from there and pull down. So the main thing that you need to think about with this one is that you're trying to pull your legs down and push them up. So you're creating resistance like this way, but you don't have to have your hands on your feet. So hands on the ankles work well, keep your spine nice and long, and then think about pushing through your heels if you're giving that resistance right there and then big breath in, and then for half stirrup pose, you'll keep one foot rounded on the ground, and then it's kind of like happy baby, but instead of grabbing the outside, you're gonna grab the inside. So versus being out here, arm is now in here, 
and then you're externally rotating. So from your hip socket, think about turning out to the side and then just doing one at a time. So then you're still creating that tension. So I'm still pushing my foot up. I'm still shrugging down with my shoulder. And then my forearm is like lightly engaged just so I don't feel like I'm tipping over to the side that I'm, my stirrup side. And then this leg can be bent like mine is, or you can extend it forward, which is gonna make it harder because of your little internal pulley system um, and functional line. So like your inner thighs connect up through your pelvic floor foxually, and they all work together. So my right adductor, my right inner thigh muscles, always super tight because I had knee surgery and a bunch of stuff. And so because of that, when I do this, I have to really focus on keeping my left leg in line. So just move slowly, take your time with it, and know that like, even though you might only be doing one side, you're still doing both. So next, alternating internal knee drops. With these ones, you're going to sit up. So you can actually do these lying too. I'm gonna to show you seated, but just know that you can be laying on your back. Um, hands are gonna be behind you, so I don't have a preference if your fingers point away or if you're the person that can have your fingers pointing in. It's a nice little wrist stretch, but I'm gonna leave it up to you. So arm position doesn't matter to me, as long as they're not like locked out. So energy in your hands, make sure that your joints aren't doing everything. And then you're gonna step your feet wide, um, like pretty, pretty wide. It's gonna depend on uh, your body, which is totally fine and how tight your hips are. So think about slowly internally rotating one femur and dropping your knee toward the center. And then think about your pinky toe, like planting and scooping your leg out and then rolling up to the inner arch of your foot, rotating your femur in and then pinky toe leads and scoops out. So what do I mean by that? When you're coming in to the middle right here, your foot's gonna come up a little bit, right? If you can keep it down, great. But if you're doing this, probably not a thing. So if that's happening, think about your pinky toe knuckle. So not the bone itself, but like the knuckle where it connects to your foot, reaching over and scooping down. And that's gonna help strengthen your feet, your ankles, and just your whole leg line, spiral line. So uh, do those ones, inhale to drop, exhale to return out, if that makes sense to you. Um, and in your body, and then we're gonna move on to knees. So uh, this one is a forearm or towel knee smash. Super cool name, right? So <laughs> I'm gonna use a forearm because that way everyone has one, but if maybe your forearm doesn't reach your knee, that's also okay, you can use a rolled up hand towel. So with these ones, I'm going to extend my leg, tuck my forearm like up behind my knee, and then just like let my leg relax down. So I'm not flexing it down, I'm just kind of like letting it go down. And then bonus points, if it's okay in your body, to kind of hug your shin closer. So you're trying to smush your forearm. The point of this is to get all of the little muscles or big muscles that attach kind of like behind your knee to go back into their groove. So a lot of us tend to have hips that are tilted forward, which over elongates our hamstrings, which then causes all the muscles behind our knee to kind of pull out more that can cause knee pain and instability in the knee. And so this, having that pressure back there and having it relax and compress it allows all of those muscles to kind of like chill out and it's gonna allow your calf and shin to rotate more, which is supposed to, in theory. So after you do your forearm uh, or towel knee smash, again, 10 breaths, um, feel free to like do ankle circles if it feels good, but you don't have to. Um, then we're actually gonna work on our shin rotation with the next movement. So if you're noticing that like when you do this, you have a really pinchy line on one side, this next one might be a good one to do after that. You're going to wrap your right bicep around your knee and then wrap your right hand to the inside of your right foot. So I'm going to be using my right hand to try and pull my foot out to the side and I'm gonna try and swivel my foot against it. So you're creating self-resistance again and that's gonna work on internal shin rotation. And then, once you've done that for a few times, kind of like swivel, hold for a few seconds, relax, swivel, hold for a few seconds, relax. Then, we're gonna use our left hand, wrap our left arm around the inside of our right knee, and then left hand around the outside or pinky toe edge of our right foot. So now, I'm gonna be pulling in and my foot's gonna be swiveling out. So I'm creating tension by pulling my left arm to the left, and I'm trying to swivel my foot out and working on external shin rotation. So, your foot's out at an angle like this. 
your external rotation is already pretty good, but if you try to internally rotate here, it's not really going to give you the same benefits. So work on having a, a level foot. So big toe and pinky toe muscles are, or knuckles are in line versus one being tilted further forward than the other. Um, that doesn't make sense. Just try it and let me know if you have questions. Um, thumb poke cat massage. So this one's fun and it's also been a, a couple other videos, but you're going to take your thumbs and you're going to start up behind your knee and you're just going to poke and wiggle and like just shimmy and wiggle down and it should feel kind of nice. You might, whoop, might get to a tender spot, um, but this is getting soleus, this is getting Achilles, this is also just helping with like the pistons of your legs, right? Because Anyway, we don't need to go down that road, but this is helping make sure that your leg can actually slide up and down and your ankle can move a little bit better because your soleus will be more mobile. Um, next, I was going to say after again, but next we have uh, gas pedals. So uh, the thumb poke calf massage is a great complement to gas pedals, just saying. So you're going to... You can do this with a band, you can also just do it body weight. We're doing this video as if you don't have any other objects other than your body. So with the gas pedal, you're imagining like driving a car, right? So I, again, using no objects, I snap my leg on my foot and then I think about spreading my big toe and my pinky toe away from each other. So I've spread my toe arch and then I'm gonna try to push that nice even arch that I've created forward and then slide my heel forward. Because your ankle is kind of like a little pyramid, right? As you point your foot, your uh, shin slides forward. As you flex your foot, your shin slides back. And so there's a lot of like shimmying going on, right? This is trying to encourage the little teeter on your pyramid of an ankle. So you may also do these, if you want a little resistance, half kneeling position. So grounding that back foot, tucking your tailbone under, toe arch is nice and built, and then you lift up and then plant down. Work on your balance, apparently. <laughs> um, so belly button lifted, and then lift up, lower down. So if you need more resistance, push down, lift up, lower down. So again, just think about the glide. I feel like that's really helpful. Um, but next, we're doing ankles and feet. So I'm going to pop my shoes off because we're going to start with Scrunch, point, spread, flex. So I'm gonna show you with my hands just because it's gonna be easier on video, but you're going to scrunch your toes, point your foot, spread your toes, flex your foot. So what it looks like in real time, I like doing it up in the air, so like while I'm laying down, um, just because blood and lymph and everything can flow in a different direction, we're on our feet a lot. So I'm gonna scrunch all my toes, point, um, think about the gas pedal. So again, gas pedals might be helpful for this. Spread your toes as wide as you can, and then slide your heel forward in space. So, scratch, point, spread, flex. Scratch, point, spread, <laughs> flex. So, fun thing that might happen is a foot cramp. Um, if it does, the next thing is actually really helpful. So. Um, if, it, if you have a foot cramp, try not to go like, ah, and get out of it. Try to like inhale your way out of it. And that way you can help repattern that response in your body and let your body know that like, this is okay. Also, it gets you oxygen. So that's helpful all the time. Um, so next we have big toe, little toe, mid arch wiggles. Still open for naming suggestions, but this is what we got. Um, so you're going to grab your big toe knuckle and your pinky toe knuckle and just shimmy them. Just push and pull. And the goal with this is to get those bones to glide more. You can totally do this on all of your little metatarsals, but you don't have to. Big toe, little toe will give you a good idea if your foot is moving or not. So part of why we do this is because as you walk, your bones are supposed to kind of glide and expand, and most people don't. So uh, shoes, lifestyle, just lots of stuff is the cause for that. So don't feel bad if your feet are tight, just work on them. And then the mid arch, think about like, uh, the middle of your foot where that arch is at the highest point, there's actually a little joint there. And so you're going to poke the middle arch and then grab the big toe and kind of wiggle it away. So when I'm doing it, I take my right thumb under my left big toe and kind of grab that knuckle. And then I take my left hand, poke my left inner arch, and I try to like shimmy and wiggle away from my arch. It's like I'm trying to pull my big toe longer. So lateral ankle rocks are the next thing that we have. 
You may do them standing or lying. I'll show you both since I'm back here. So if you're flying, you're gonna think about pushing your inner heel and your inner big toe forward. And then you're gonna think about pushing your pinky toe knuckle and your outer heel forward. So I don't want you to just like go through the stuff that like high school coaches tell you, like do your ankle circle. I want you to be really intentional with this. Sorry, Kelly, can be out. Um, but big toe, inner arch forward, pinky toe, inner arch forward. So you're just rocking side to side. If you did do the internal, external shin rotation, you'll notice it here. Um, and then for standing ones, if you have a squishy surface, it's like kind of extra fun because you can kind of like use it as a tool. But you're gonna go into a semi-wide stance and then think about spreading your toes, spreading your toe arch. Think about feeling the inner parts of your heel, your big toe grounding, and then pinky toe, like basically check all of the points of your feet, right? And then I'm going to push through my right inner arch and my left outer arch and then opposite side. And so I'm kind of like pushing with this leg, pulling with this leg, and then I'm going to pull with that foot and push with this foot. So on video, it's not gonna seem like a lot, but you're just kind of rocking your ankles side to side and working on using the muscles of your feet to help do that. So that is your lateral ankle rocks. The final thing is ankle alphabet. Um, you can do it standing. It's a good little practice for balance. You can do it lying, you can do it supported standing, whatever you want but you can write your name. It really doesn't matter. The point of the alphabet is to get your foot in all these different positions, right? So that is the final thing on our workout, workout on our compilation video. Um, so I hope these are helpful tools for you. We went over a lot in this one video and uh, there will be short links and everything, but keep it as like a safe video. So that way, if you're having neck pain, you know to do the trap pull head turn, or if you're having knee pain when you step and it's on the outside of your calf, you're like, huh, I bet you I could do that towel smash thing and it would help. So just think about, these are ways to build resilience in your body. And it doesn't mean things aren't ever gonna happen. It just means that you'll be more capable of dealing with it when it does. So enjoy your life. I hope these are helpful tools. Let me know if you need any help on cues or modifications and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.